supply chain for food. The reason I have this case study, current events case study, or currently have the Ukraine conflict going on in Europe. What we have, okay, we're going to look at, focus on this, and we'll talk about why this is important here, is that Ukraine and Russia provide 29% of the wheat to the world. 25% to the world, okay? So they're feeding the world, as well as Russia is the major exporter of fertilizer used to grow food throughout the world. Not just wheat, but other things, okay? So key pieces of information that we need to understand here. And why do you need to understand it? The reason you need to understand it because you have larger impacts down your supply chain. Even if you have nothing to do with food, there is an impact to this particular situation. So we're going to talk about that. Okay. So as we talked about here, CNBC put out a report on how Russian invasion of Ukraine, the breadbasket of Europe, could hit the supply chain. Ukraine and Russia together, 29% of the wheat throughout the world. Russia, 29%. China receives corn from Ukraine. Okay. The larger importer of corn to China is from Ukraine. It replaced the United States last year. Ukraine's big. So there's a major impact here. I know we talk about the Russian-Chinese relationship here, but China currently is relying on Ukraine for food sustenance. All right. And you know, so, so something to think about. Russia and Ukraine are working in metals and the European Union will be, you know, they'll be seeing the immediate impact. So what's the immediate impact further down or the later impact for us in our supply chain? So why is this important? Wheat and corn, 29% of the global export, a major import uh, for China is corn. You know, this is where people need to eat. And that's one of the big questions that's always asked to global leaders. You know, we talk about, you see what's on the news about politics and some things that, you know, what I would consider unimportant. But at the end of the day, it's about the economy. And we get down into the economy, it's about food, water, and energy, right? Energy is used to deliver food. Energy is used to make uh, food and water and putting these things together. So those are like three components of the global economy that must always be managed by global leaders. And here we have an impact, right? Impact, something that we haven't thought about. And what does this mean? So the U.S., say Russia and Ukraine, don't work it out, right? It's not time to harvest the wheat yet, but what is the impact on the wheat crops currently right now? It's not getting into the ground. It's not getting planted. It's not growing. It could be burned. It could be destroyed, right? All these different things. And 29% of the, of the world means that other that needs to be filled somewhere. The U.S., the United States, has said we will fill that gap. That gap must come from the reserves, right? The reserves, and then those reserves must be replenished for future, right? So something to think about, and that means supply starts to go demand, go down. Demand is staying the same. Supply is going down. That means prices are going to go up for food. You're like, Randy, I'm in manufacturing. I'm in logistics. I'm in other things that have nothing to do with food, but you use people to do those things, and people need food, and if their costs for food go up, they can't spend money on other things. So if you're a manufacturer of retail stuff, they're not spending money on retail, they're spending on food. So that affects your market. Drop in demand, they've got a different choice to make, right? As well as the cost of labor. For them to continue to work for you, continue to deliver what you need and what you're doing, they have costs. So they're gonna have to choose, do I work for you or do I work for someone else? Because I have to feed my family. My costs are going up. So things are starting to, you know, start to take shape here. It's like, okay, maybe things aren't as important when it comes to entertainment and things that we use for chewing gum for the mine. And, you know, who cares who won the, the sports event? Who cares where that next company is coming from? I have to feed my family. So a small impact, a blip on the screen. And as a supply chain professional, you need to be thinking this way. Because if you're a manufacturer that relies on people and the cost of people is going to go up because they have to eat, your profits are going to go down, one. Two, demand for your products are going to go down because I have to buy food, not stuff. Okay? Well, things to consider. Long term, 
Short shortages filled. Where is that going to come from? And we talked about fertilizer as well. Russia is the major exporter of fertilizer throughout the world. So what happens when Russia starts to get a little antsy about what, what you know, maybe they don't want to play anymore. Maybe they don't want to export fertilizer. Maybe their fertilizer is not as high quality because their focus is somewhere else. Okay. And then that affects growth of food in other places throughout the world. Again, issues in the supply of food. Something, a blip, a small thing that you need to consider. Something you need to consider. Okay. Now, fertilizer, key to growing food. Shortages can be filled with reserves in the short term, but long term, how do we grow food? How do we refill those reserves? The U.S. has reserves. Other countries have reserves. And so we'll talk about that towards the end is what does this mean to us? What does that mean to us? The European Union is going to be affected in the immediate term. The longer term is felt throughout the world. People need food in their home. Labor needs food to function. And the retail market needs people to buy stuff. All right. But if I'm choosing food over stuff, I'm not going to buy stuff. Metals, fertilizers, and manufacturing. Manufacturing equipment to get fertilizers to harvest food, to deliver people to their jobs. Manufacturing is also important. So what exactly do I focus my manufacturing on? Wants are retail goods and entertainment. Okay. So, you know, those are wants. So as an individual consumer, you should be looking at your budget right now. What do I want? What do I need? Where are my sources of food? Do I need to start storing food? Something to consider, right? Do I need to start choosing other things? Build my savings, you know? What do I need to do? Now, the impact of the war is going to be on the poor because the majority of their revenue goes to acquisition of food. You know, I only make a few bucks. I spend a few of those bucks, a lot of those bucks on food, right? So that we want to consider that. We want to consider that. And that's your workforce, right? Where is market where is grains where are grains available throughout the world who exports food grain european union russia australia ukraine united states canada argentina kazakhstan and turkey export grain but you'll see uh, if you look at the two lists you'll see a couple of those are also importers who's importing grain egypt turkey they export and import indonesia algeria bangladesh brazil Philippines, Nigeria, Japan, European Union, exports and imports. Okay, so something just to keep in mind. Keep in mind where is this? And then what? Another part we'll talk about here when we go down these lists. What's the impact of crisis on the food? Okay, look at your supply chain. Look down the road. Where are you vulnerable when it comes to food? Not just buying food for your organization, but for your labor force. Who are your suppliers that rely on a labor force to manufacture things? And their costs are going to go up. So what can you do now to start to acquire resources or secure resources? Find an alternate source and then take action to acquire those resources. Start putting in place contracts. Start putting in place things to assure delivery. But what I will share with you and something for you to think about is a contract is not nearly as good as ownership. What do I mean by that? You have a contract, you have a piece of paper, you have a promise to deliver, but it's not the stuff. And if a country has to decide between delivering on your contract or delivering on your contract or we're keeping, retaining the stuff for their own population. What do you think they're going to do? And this has happened in the past. We saw this with the pandemic in the last couple of years where countries decided to maintain and keep their own inoculations, their own vaccines for their population. And when, only when they had extra, only when their population was secure were they able to export vaccines to other countries. And this happened before with the bird flu it happened before where the United States had contracts with Canadian manufacturers of a vaccine and Australian manufacturers of a vaccine. And when it happened, those countries said, Nope, you don't get what you have on a contract because we need it for our population. So what I'm telling you is think about the longer term of the supply chain. 
Okay, think about the longer term of the supply chain and how it's going to impact you. Food is over here, and there's a lot of pieces involved. Finance, we haven't talked about finance yet. We haven't talked about cost of money, interest rates, where money is, all these different things. All right, but there's a there's a further down the road. It's just something like, well, it doesn't really matter to me. It's Ukraine, it's Russia. But 29% of the world food, right? There's a bigger, bigger discussion here, bigger discussion. Ownership is important. So take delivery now. Can you store it? Can you maintain it? Can you secure it? Right? You have a warehouse. You're storing stuff. You store stuff now so that you can sell it later because the costs are down and they're they're uh, reasonable right now. But as the cost of food goes up, the cost of labor goes up, the cost of stuff goes up. These things start happening. It starts a bigger, longer term impact down the road. Okay. So you know this is important to think of, and that's why we're doing this. Analyze the requirements because as you're receiving requirements now. We should be asking ourselves, when are we going to receive delivery? When do we need to make payment? How is that going to be affected? Can we guarantee receipt? Is that supplier going to be able to deliver on the promise in the contract? If they can't, then what? What's your alternative source? What's your alternative source? What's your alternative plan? What is it that you're going to do?